Hi everyone, alright, so I want to show you something that is absolutely insane. So ZBrush 2021 got released and they've introduced this brand new Dynamics feature, which means that you can actually run simulations in the program. So you can see over here we've got this cloth that's interacting with this ground plane and it's falling onto the ground plane. But what's crazy about the techniques I'm going to be showing you in the video is that you can basically run a dynamic or you can sculpt on the surface but you can actually record this as an animation and take it out of ZBrush and take it over into another program like Blender. So over here, here's the face. So this face is using the default dynamics and you can see it's creating almost like a deflating or melting effect but with this plane on the left hand side, this was sculpted in ZBrush using one of the cloth twist brushes. So it recorded the entire sequence of me sculpting in that twist and it recorded it as an animation. So I would consider this technique to be sculpting animation. I've, I've personally never seen anything like this done before. So I think it's pretty insane that you can do this with ZBrush. So you can use the power of the brand new Dynamics feature, which is right over here. It allows you to do all of this crazy stuff directly in ZBrush, but you can record this, take it out of the program and take it out over to other programs like Blender and Cinema 4D. So if you're interested in seeing how this is done, then stick around. And without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so open up ZBrush. By default, you should have this light box enabled. If you don't, just click on light box. We're going to be loading this demo head female project file. It comes pre-installed with ZBrush. So just double click on there and you'll be presented with this project file. So you'll notice by default that we've got this grid in our scene which is visible and that's the floor plane over here. And we'll be doing a very basic dynamic simulation. So we'll have this, uh, the face uh, colliding with the floor and it will look like the face is actually melting. On the right hand side if you go to tool and go to sub tool you can see over here we've got the face and we've got eyes. So if you want the eyes to be affected with the face as well with the dynamics you need to make sure that this is one sub tool. So you'll just select the face that's right at the top, go to merge and click on merge down over here. We'll click on OK. And now the eyes are part of the face. So before we run the dynamic simulation, you actually want to export out this default state as an OBJ. So you want to go to export and just save this out as an OBJ. Mine's called female head. And there we go. So now we can go ahead and record the dynamic simulation. So to record the dynamic simulation is super easy. Under Tools, you just want to go to Layers and you'll see there's an option over here called Record Deformation Animation. When you click on that, it turns orange which means that as soon as I start running the Dynamics, it's going to record everything that's happening that's deforming the mesh. So I'll go to Dynamics, click on Run Simulation and now I can decide when I want the simulation to stop. So for the purpose of this, let's make the entire head melt. And like I said, this entire Dynamic Simulation is being recorded onto this button over here, this record deformation animation. Now I'll go ahead and stop my run simulation. And now to make sure I actually save this out, I want to left click over here, this dialog box pops up and you can see we're saving out a .mdd file. So we click on save and that's it. We've officially saved out our deformation and now we can take it over into another program like Blender and into Cinema 4D. So for the purpose of preparing this file, I'm going to be using Blender. So go to blender.org and just download Blender. You don't even need to know how to use this program. I'm just going to be showing you how to prepare the file. So once it's downloaded, open up Blender and we want to go to File, Import and we want to import that OBJ. So that default OBJ, which is my female head. Very important, click on Geometry. You want to go to Keep Vert, vert Order and you want to click on Polygroups and then click on Import OBJ. And there we go. So to import the animation data from ZBrush, make sure you left click to select this head, go to this gear icon, you want to add a modifier that's called a mesh cache. Now you can see the format here is on MDD and the file path right, is going to be the animation.mdd. And that's it. You'll see if I scrub forward on this timeline, there's the entire animation from ZBrush and now it's in Blender. Right, if I click on play, there we go. And we can control the speed of this animation by adjusting this frame scale. So if I increase this frame scale over here, let me just see. It should run a little bit faster. Yep, definitely. So just play around with this frame scale to increase or decrease the, the speed of the simulation. You can see I can move this up as well. It doesn't matter where it is in my scene. And I'm just clicking here and you can click on this gizmo to move this up and down. And 
that's the entire animation from ZBrush in Blender. But now if you wanted to take this over to Cinema 4D, it's very simple. And by the way, if you're in Blender and you see all of these faceted faces, uh, you just right click and click on Shade Smooth and now it looks really nice. And there we go. But now to take this over to Cinema 4D, let me show you what file type we need to export. So just make sure you've got the head selected. You want to go to File, Export, Alembic. So Cinema 4D can read Alembic files. And I'm just saving this to the desktop as Female, Final. And these are my Alembic export settings. I've actually left everything default. And then you click on Export Alembic. You'll see that it's exporting out all of those frames for the animation. And now we are good to go. You can use this in Cinema 4D as well. So just to show you in Cinema 4D, I'll go to File, Merge Objects find the Alembic file that I exported out, which is this female final. And you'll see that's on frame rate of 30. I'll leave everything default, click on OK. And let me just zoom in here a little bit. So it's really small in the scene. Let me just scale that up a bit. But there we go. And that's in Cinema 4D with the melting effect. So super cool uh, that you can actually use the incredible uh, dynamic simulation in ZBrush to actually record out a, an animation and take it into a different program. So if, you, if you've ever wanted to do these melting effects, you can see just how easy it is to do by using ZBrush's dynamic simulation feature. So now that you see the, how the entire process works, this means that you can basically sculpt animation. So if we go ahead and create, recreate something like a plane and drag it out in my scene, click on edit, hide the light box and make Polymesh 3D, I'm also going to change this to this basic material and I'm going to go to geometry, go to dynamic subdiv and enable that and just increase some of the thickness over here on this plane. So right now, let me also go to transpose. So I'm using the default transpose. Like I said, we can sculpt animation. So if I go to layers and we click on this to start recording and let's grab one of the cloth brushes, right? So I'm going to grab this cloth hook. Actually, wait, I'll grab the cloth twist and I'm going to just increase my draw size. So right now, while it's recording, that was basically recorded. Okay, so I'll just click on there and save this out. I'll call that animation two. And then let me just undo that because I need to save this out as a OBJ. So this will be plain. And then again, if we go back to Blender, I'm pressing Control N to create a new general scene. File, import, OBJ. So we've got that plane in the scene over here. Go to geometry, keep the vert order and the poly groups. So there's our plane. And then select the plane, go to the gear icon, add modifier, mesh cache. And let's find the animation, which is animation two. There we go. Now if I scrub through, look at that. How cool is that, right? We literally sculpted that animation. So you can record that entire sequence and the possibilities for doing like insane animated sequences by literally sculpting it is completely up to you, right? The sky's the limit with this, this technique where you can use ZBrush to record the animation and actually export it out. So I thought I'd just show you quickly what's possible. And that was just using one of the basic twist brushes and just making sure that that was enabled while I'm recording the deformation. Okay, so that covers the entire technique. Have fun with this. I right, play around with the dynamics. I know if we pump up the simulation iterations to a thousand, you get much better results. The firmness, this is basically rigidity. If it's on six, it's very rigid. If it's on one, it can be very like silky smooth. So play around with that. Maybe even play around with some of the inflate. So you can literally make something inflate while you're sculpting it, on, uh, sculpting it on here and recording it. As long as that is enabled, and let's maybe try one more brush, maybe this cloth hook, and let me put some inflate on here. So every time I sculpt, it's going to inflate and move and inflate and move, and I can move that around in my scene. So maybe there's like this cloth that's just blowing. Now I'm just constantly moving around. Maybe you wanted to manually hand animate a cloth that's blowing like this. It's recording every single movement. There we go, I just recorded all of that. And I click on here, save that out as animation three. And then do the exact same process where I bring it into Blender. 
And just one more tip, since this video is centered around Dynamics, let's open up that demo head file again. Let's say you actually wanted this head to collide with another piece of geometry instead of just the plane over here. So if I append a cube, and I'm actually going to delete the eyes in this case, and let me just uh, go to Transpose, right, and just scale this down a bit. What if I want my face over here to collide with the sphere? So it's very simple to do. Just select the object that you want the dynamics to be applied onto. So I'm basically going to be telling ZBrush that I want this face to collide with the sphere. So make sure the face is selected. Then go to Dynamics. And all you have to do is click on this collision volume. So it calculates the object. And now, if I go ahead and... Okay, if I run, if I run the simulation, it's going to fall straight down, right? But if I take the cube and put the cube over here and then move this face up a little bit. And now if I run dynamics, I run the simulation, you can see that it's still falling through the cube. So in that case, all you have to do is you just need to click on recalculate. All right, it recalculates it. And now when I run the simulation, it will collide with the actual cube. And what's really cool about this is if you use the transpose cloth, and now I move this gizmo around, look at that. That is, it's actually insane that whenever I'm maneuvering this around, look at this, like there's damage on this side of the face. It just looks crazy with what you can do in ZBrush. And again, you can animate that, right? Maybe you want this face to collide with this cube like that, and you want that to be animated. All you have to do under layers is make sure that that is turned on, and you've seen the entire process for doing that. But this is how you can make your object collide with any other piece of geometry in the scene. So just to show you all of those movements that I made in ZBrush, here's it right now in Blender. All right, so you could hand animate maybe some cloth blowing in the wind, and you're literally hand animating it, especially if you're using a Wacom pen in ZBrush. But it's a very interesting way to, to animate geometry by literally sculpting it. Okay, so that's going to be the end of the tutorial. I hope this has been useful. And you can see just how incredible uh, this technique is for animating geometry by literally sculpting it. So have fun, experiment. Let me know what you think down in the description below. And as always, I truly appreciate the support on this channel. You guys are awesome. And stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials. And goodbye.